Africa, where millions emerged some four million years ago, from where some a hundred years ago, Homo sapiens spread all over the world. Africa, the mother of us all. Good morning, or good afternoon, yes. <laughs> the reason why I'm giving you this talk today is partly because of this book, Africa, Ordinary States, Altered, I mean, sorry, Altered States, Ordinary Miracles by Richard Dowden. When I first came across it, I was like, okay, here's another European man talking about Africa's problems and what needs to be fixed, HIV AIDS, Poverty, hunger, the list is endless. But to my surprise, this is not the case. Dowden talks about things we are not exposed of every day. Africa's humanity, its rich culture, and its tradition. As a community, I feel it is time for us to know the vibrant, colorful, inspiring side of Africa. So in London, New York, Paris, you know, Africans do not lose the habit of catching your eye as you walk past. <laughs> they stop, raise an eyebrow in greeting, and, fl and a flicker of a smile starts in their eyes. A small thing? No. It is the prize that Africa offers to the world, humanity. In Africa, the very essentials of existence, light, earth, water, Food, family, love, <laughs> sickness, death are more immediate, more intense. We have lost human values that are still abound in Africa. We rely on this to tell you what Africa is all about. But this is just a fraction to the whole picture, to the realities of Africa. I want us to see more of this. The color, the inspiration, the laughter, the, the children, everything. You will tell me that it's the journalists to blame. They say, look at the pictures for proof. The media's defense is that it feeds on the wars and the disasters. Not all Africans are fighting or starving. I repeat that, not all Africans are fighting or starving. In fact, millions have never known hunger or war. The ordinary gets ignored in Africa, as it does in Asia or South America. Normality is nice, but does it sell newspapers? No. The problem is not ignorance, but the preconceived ideas that people have of the continent. Tony Blair once called it, the scar on the conscience of the world. Africa is not a scar, but a beauty mark on this planet. Okay, so I want to share a crazy story with you. In my first year here at UBC, um, I attended a fraternity party. And <laughs> I got there with some friends and I had noticed that I was the only African girl. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, this handsome young man, he was strikingly beautiful. Um, <laughs> he walked up to me and he was like, hey, <laughs> are you all right? He was American. <laughs> Your skin color is very exotic. My skin color was exotic. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> so, where are you from? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I'm Kenyan. Kenya. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you have brilliant marathon runners there. Thank you. 
beautiful man identified me and my country to that. <laughs> in my mind, I was laughing uncontrollably, but in my heart, I was annoyed and I was so disappointed. I had realized that as a community, we need to be more exposed, very much exposed. The man blew his chance. <laughs> I feel that we should include more African books by African writers in our university education. There are some courses here that offer that. It, this is when we truly know African, African culture and tradition through their eyes, through their thoughts, and through their words. Literature is a medium of communication that we can use to explore the unknown. So last year, I was part of Africa Awareness Initiative. I was the VP external. And um, as a student club, we organized the social and cultural events, and as well as the educational events. So it opened up a medium for students to come and create dialogue about the African continent. So in Africa, you are yet to find an African community that does not celebrate with music. Give me a second. Take Ethiopia, one of the oldest countries in the world. of South Africa, famous for its rhythmic dance and song. Country, known for its tea and the Maasai tribe. Africa is as natural as breathing. No sound or beat is entirely the same. Like the diversity of music, there is also the diversity in customs. These customs don't remain, remain beyond the boundaries of the continent. A majority of people of African descent living outside the continent still make it an effort to connect, whether it's practicing common culture or sharing beliefs. I remember this past summer, I went back home. Um, I hadn't been home for about a year. And I saw my mom in the airport, and I ran, and I gave her a hug. And I was like, oh, mom, I've missed you so much. And you know, she gave me a hug and everything. And I noticed from the corner of my eye, she just gave a nudge to my aunt. And she's like, mm, someone's clearly come back with a foreign accent. <laughs> So she, she thought that I'd lost the Kenyanness, what makes me Kenyan, but it was very much in me. So what's behind a name? In Southern Africa, the name Bongani means be grateful in Zulu. In Kenya, the name Atieno means one who is born at night. Or Chieng, born when the sun rises. The name is derived from the Luo Chieng, meaning sun. 
In Nigeria, the name Akuchi means wealth from God. And in Ghana, the names Kojo and Adwa mean one who is born on a Monday. <laughs> Let's not forget Barak, meaning blessing in Arabic. <laughs> Naming is like a commissioning into the world where your parents bless you and express hope for the future of your legacy. Apparently our Chinese friends are the same. <laughs> A close friend of mine from Singapore told me that her father's name, Huang King Ji, means conqueror of the universe. <laughs> I mean, sure. Africa. Dowden calls it the most, the, the most diverse zone of planet Earth. It is not just the animals, so many of them. <laughs> from the rainless deserts of Namibia, the diminishing snows of Kilimanjaro to the forests of the Congo Basin. So what am I trying to say? You cannot fully grasp the fullness of Africa's humanity, the richness of its culture and its diversities until you have experienced it. Follow yourself in the midst of it and just breathe it in. As a UBC, as UBC and a community, I feel it is time to include and involve Africa in the creation of global citizens. Okay, so I'm more a politician than I am a poet, but I thought I would end with a piece I had scribbled down when I was planning this talk. Africa. Africa, come closer. Let me look at you. They do not see you the way I see you. From the plains of the vast savannas to the tropical forests, I see you. Let them look at you. Turn around and around. Let them see you. Hmm. The dress you wear is full of complexities, but tell them to explore your mysteries. Don't cry. You are not the dark continent, a heart of darkness, a place of horrific savagery. You are not inhuman. You are not one big country. Tell them. <laughs> you are not a scar on the conscience of the world. You are so much more. You are my mother. See her. Africa, the motherland. Thank you. <laughs>